taking place at the very start of the timeline and serving as the origin story for the Land of Hyrule, Skyward Sword's story reveals the answers to so many mysteries while also concealing so many more. The existence of the Demon Tribe, God's Tribe, and the truth of Breath of the Wild's malice are just a few of so many things that have been completely erased from the English version of Skyward Sword. The story's main antagonist, Demise, is introduced to us as the root of all evil, a demon king who wields enough power to bring the entire world to ruin. However, there is actually a lot more to Demise's character than just someone whose sole desire is to kill and obtain the Triforce. By analysing the original Japanese version of Skyward Sword, we can discover new exciting secrets and hidden truths about Demise that ultimately reveal something much greater lurking within the Zelda universe. Skyward Sword's story begins by telling a forgotten tale of the ancient past where demons emerged from a crack on the world's surface. Demonic hordes launched a brutal assault on the land, obliterating everything. We learn that this assault was led by none other than the Merciless Demise, a demon king who killed without hesitation and sought to rule the land and ultimately claim the Triforce for himself. The goddess Hylia gathered the remaining humans together on a piece of land and sent them to the skies far from the evil that had plagued the surface world. With them, she sent the Triforce and this land became known as Skyloft. With the surviving humans protected in the skies, she sealed away Demise, successfully preventing the world from suffering further havoc. Skyloft is where Link, our hero of Skyward Sword's main story, begins his adventure. Link has spent his life living on the land above the clouds, attending the Knight's Academy with his childhood friend Zelda. Their daily lives are shaken shortly after the conclusion of the wing ceremony, when Zelda is forcefully separated from Link and dragged down to the surface, a place that is said to be ruled by evil forces. From this moment, Link's adventure in Skyward Sword truly begins. Link is determined to reunite with Zelda and return home with her to Skyloft. In order to do so, he descends to the world below the clouds in search of her. Eventually, Link finally reunites with Zelda, only to learn that his childhood friend intends to remain in a deep slumber for thousands of years to keep Demise imprisoned within his seal. Zelda explains that as the reincarnation of the goddess Hylia, it's her destiny to ensure that Demise remains sealed. At this point in the story, Demise gets a proper introduction. When Link talks to Zelda in the past, she explains how the land in this era has not yet recovered from the intense war that had taken place against Demise many years ago. However, what Zelda says in this line in Japanese reveals something very exciting. In Japanese, Zelda says, In this era of the past, the wounds the land has sustained from the war between the goddess and the demon tribe's leader, referred to as the bringer of demise, has not yet recovered. In Japanese, Zelda refers to demise as the bringer of demise. This means that demise is actually a nameless being. He doesn't have a name at all, or at least one that we know of. If Link consults Fi for information regarding the bringer of Demise during the showdown with him, she refers to Link's opponent as Demise, which is how we know him in English. However, just like Zelda, Fi also refers to him as the bringer of Demise in Japanese, rather than simply Demise like in English. The English text continues to develop this trend throughout the story and implies that his name is Demise when in Japanese he is referred to as a bringer of it. Again, the bringer of Demise may have a true name, we just don't know it yet. What's more is that Zelda also introduces the existence of tribes to us, and more specifically, a demon tribe. Already we're able to establish a much clearer image of this ruthless leader who commands his demonic army, which does make sense, considering how the Bring of Demise is depicted as doing just that, as we see in the opening cutscene to the game. In English, this information regarding the existence of the demon tribe has been completely removed. On top of that, the Japanese version builds on the concept of the demon tribe even further. When the Bringer of Demise is freed from the seal that binds him, Link courageously goes after him, stepping through a dark portal that leads to somewhere unexpected, a serene, beautiful place where the ultimate showdown between Link and the Bringer of Demise is set to commence. Just before the battle begins, in English, the Bringer of Demise threatens that the world shall be under his control for all of eternity. It's certainly a very bold statement, yet in Japanese he threatens that there is something else that Link should fear. Of course, the bringer of Demise's desire to rule the world is obvious. However, in Japanese, he explicitly states that the world's future will be ruled by the demon tribe. 
This means that in Japanese, the bringer of demise has a much bigger purpose. He has a clear end goal in mind, compared to how in the English version, he just states that the world will be his. This drastically changes several things for the Zelda series. Firstly, not every antagonist that appears throughout the Zelda series is a form of Demise's hatred. Some are just powerful members of the demon tribe. Vati, the main antagonist for the Minish Cap for instance, is also a demon who seeks power for his own personal desires. Secondly, this isn't the only time that the demon tribe has been mentioned in the Japanese version of a Zelda game, which also begs the question, who exactly are the demon tribe and where do they come from? We we can gain a clue to this mystery by looking at the Wind Waker. After besting the Tower of the Gods, Link ventures down to the depths of the Great Sea where he discovers Hyrule Castle enveloped in a large barrier of magical energy that has caused time itself to stop. Link draws the Master Sword from its pedestal and when he does, immediately the flow of time resumes with all of the monsters that were trapped in time being freed. When Link returns to the surface, he challenges the Forsaken Fortress for the second time. Link successfully rescues his sister and the other girls that had disappeared from Windfall Island. Link then confronts Ganondorf, however, he fails to defeat him due to the Master Sword losing its power. In English, Ganondorf explains that the Master Sword Link obtained from Hyrule Castle acts as a key, one that has kept the seal on him and his magic intact. Whereas in Japanese, Ganondorf explains everything a little more in depth. While that sword is the anti-demon sword that repels demons, at the same time it is also the annoying seal that was sealing my demon tribe. In Japanese, Ganondorf explicitly states that the master sword was the reason that his demon tribe was sealed in time. This is hugely different to the English version where the mention of the demon tribe's existence has been erased. Instead, Ganondorf simply refers to the master sword as the key that seals his magic. He also refers to the monsters under the sea as his own demon tribe. This means that these monsters were not simply roaming, but rather they are under the command of Ganondorf, who instructed them to attack Hyrule Castle. Therefore, they all belong to the part of the same demon tribe. Due to the discovery of the demon tribe's existence, suddenly so many antagonists in the Zelda series have gained a whole new level of depth to their character. Another interesting example where evidence of the existence of the demon tribe has been cut from the English version is during Link's encounter with Girahim at Skyview Temple. In English, Girahim introduces himself as the Demon Lord. However, in Japanese, he says something a little different. I am Girahim, the current demon tribe chief of this world that you call the surface. Girahim refers to himself as the actual chief of the demon tribe in Japanese. He claims he is the current ultimate overseer of the demonic race. Calling himself the current chief of the demon tribe is an interesting foreshadow of the new incarnation of the demon king, Demise. It seems that Nintendo has made an effort to erase every bit of evidence of a demon tribe existing from the English text in the Zelda series. What's more is that Girahim even uses an ability that's associated with the members of the demon tribe. Towards the end of the game, Link faces a horde of monsters head-on to prevent Girahim's plans to sacrifice Zelda and revive the Bringer of Demise. After reaching Girahim, Link is challenged to a final battle with him. During his speech just before this battle takes place, Girahim emphasizes how he's prepared a humiliating death for our hero. He's even named it as the Endless Plunge. In my opinion, the Endless Plunge does not do the true Japanese name of his ability justice. Here's what he actually says. I'll let you taste our demon tribe's ultimate execution art, the infinite Naraku. Straight away we can see that this line of Girahim's dialogue is strikingly different to what we were given in English. Girahim refers to the ability as the infinite Naraku, which is a term in Buddhist cosmology that essentially describes a realm of hell. The kind of things that take place in Naraku can be described as a succession of brutal torments in which a person experiences the results of his karma or actions. The person must endure the suffering for hundreds and hundreds of millions of years until their karma has been cleansed, after which they are reborn in one of the other 16 higher worlds to repeat the same process. This also explains why the final battle between Link and Girahim plays out the way it does. Girahim attempts to discharge the demon tribe's ultimate execution art, Naraku, onto Link, with each platform descent representing how the wrongdoers would fall deeper into the worlds of Naraku while enduring intense punishment over and over again. Granted, this would have been quite a lot to cover in Skyward Sword, which could explain why the translators chose to simply have Girahim say plunge in English. 
However, there is just so much depth that's lost in translation. In fact, this whole line is an interesting throwback to when Link encounters Girihim in the Fire Sanctuary, where, in Japanese, he says, I did say I'd give you a living hell a while ago, but may I retract that statement? Whereas in English, the foreshadowing of him giving Link a living hell has been completely removed. Instead, Girihim talks about making Link's ears bleed, which is perhaps a little on the nicer side, compared to being tormented and dying over and over again. Let's talk about the demon tribe's origins. Where do they come from? They have to originate from somewhere. It's not like they just appeared randomly, right? This is also briefly explained within the Japanese version of Skyward Sword, whereas the English version once again omits it. The moment that the bringer of demise is successfully resurrected, in English, he taunts Link by saying, If you truly desire to raise your blade against the world I would build, come for me. In English, the bringer of demise states that he is going to create a new world and should Link wish to challenge him, he should come and do so. However, in Japanese, he is much more specific. But if you say that you oppose the demon tribe's world, then come after me. I will wait for a little while. The bringer of Demise's words in Japanese are much more precise, referring to the world as one that belongs to the demon race. What's more is that the bringer of Demise is not simply asking if Link opposes him, but rather it's almost like Link is being tested to see if he wields enough courage to face the entire demon tribe as a whole. Surprisingly, this isn't the first time that the existence of a demon world has been introduced into the Zelda series either. In Ocarina of Time, we learn that the resting place of the Triforce, the Sacred Realm, is a mirror that reflects one's heart. In English, we learn that if a being with an evil heart enters, the realm will become corrupt, whereas if a being with a pure heart enters, the realm will become a paradise. On the other hand, in Japanese, the concept of the Sacred Realm is described a touch differently. If the heart of one who enters it is evil, it turns into a demon world. If the heart is pure, it turns into a paradise. The sacred realm is said to transform into a demon world should a being with an evil heart enter it. The Japanese word used in this sentence is a little different to the ones we've seen so far, however. This word is makai, which can refer to the demon world. However, it can also translate to world of evil spirits or even hell. More specifically, it usually refers to a dark world where evil demons reside. This, in my opinion, paints a much clearer image of how exactly the sacred realm would look like compared to the English version, which states that the realm would become full of evil. This is not all though, as in the Japanese version of Skyward Sword, the bringer of demise reveals the true source of his hatred, something that was also mellowed down in the English version. On the other side of the dark portal, where the final battle takes place, the bringer of demise expresses how much he truly despises the goddesses. In English, he emphasizes his immense amount of hatred for the gods by describing how it's boiling in his veins. Whereas in Japanese, he's considerably more expressive while introducing the concept of something new again my flowing hatred for the god's tribe, the joy which comes from the release of my power. The bringer of demise thrives on the adrenaline he feels upon releasing his power, a power that is fueled specifically by his hate towards the god's tribe, whereas in English, the bringer of demise has mostly been depicted as a mindless enraged entity. Furthermore, the mention of a god's tribe existence implies that there is still a lot more that is yet to be fully explored in the Zelda series. Eventually though, the bringer of demise meets his own demise and is sealed within the Master Sword. In the English version of the game, he curses how an incarnation of his hatred shall forever follow Link for the rest of time. If we look closely at the bringer of demise's dying words in Japanese, we can discover something truly groundbreaking. This hatred and resentment, its embodiment will continue to roam in agony across this bloodstained sea of darkness along with you damned people for eternity. The most important part here is where he expresses his hatred and resentment. In English, the resentment part has been completely omitted, and instead, he just expresses his hatred. Hatred is certainly a strong word, but a vital secret that connects Skyward Sword and Breath of the Wild has been lost in translation here. The word that the Bringer of Demise uses to refer to his hatred in Japanese is onnen. And this is where things get super exciting. The Japanese word onnen actually refers to the overwhelming intense combination of hate, grudge, and vengefulness that drive phantoms to become furious. Essentially, onnen is the powerful fuel that powers a relentless, angry ghost. 
Translating onnen as hatred is technically not wrong. It's just that there is so much more to this word that can't be understood from simply referring to it as hatred. With all of this in mind, now let's take a look at the description of Dark Beast Ganon in Breath of the Wild's Hyrule Compendium. The entry for Dark Beast Ganon in English mentions that his awareness has been consumed by malice, therefore all he knows is to destroy. We've seen malice used for many dark things in Breath of the Wild. It appears all over Hyrule, tainting the lands with evil and corrupting the Sheikah technology. Many monsters are also affected, and even the dragon Nadra, a literal spirit of a goddess, suffers from it. By looking at the Japanese version, we can discover the true origins of Ganon's malice. The Hyrule Compendium entry for Dark Beast Ganon can be translated translated like this. Having been defeated by Link, Ganon's dispersed hatred merged into this form. Similar to sinister demon power that has combined with a savage beast, this form is appropriately referred to as the Demon Beast. It is believed to be Ganon's original form. His consciousness has been swallowed by malice, causing him to go on a rampage. In Japanese, the word to describe Ganon's malice in Breath of the Wild is Onnen which is the exact word that the Bringer of Demise uses in his dying speech in Skyward Sword, referring to his incarnation of hatred. Even the title given to Dark Beast Ganon crowns him as a hatred and malice incarnate in English. And when looking at his title in Japanese, the word Onnen appears here too. We know that the word Onnen is used to describe the fuel that powers a vengeful phantom or spirit. Therefore, this means that Ganon we see in Breath of the Wild is a mere ghost. A ghost that, according to Zelda in the English version of Breath of the Wild during the final battle has given up on reincarnation and has assumed a pure enraged form. He has given up on reincarnation and assumed his pure enraged form. This is not correct though, as Ganon has in fact not given up on reincarnation at all. Let's take a look at what Zelda says in Japanese. A rampaging form assumed from an obsessive refusal to give up on revival. This is a huge difference between the English version which tells us that Ganon has given up on reincarnation when in actual fact it's the complete opposite. What solidifies this even further though stems from another part of the Bringer of Demise's last words before he perishes in Skyward Sword. He emphasizes how his hate never fades and continues to be born anew in a never-ending cycle. In Japanese, the Bringer of Demise specifically mentions that the curse of the demon tribe will continue to be reborn, something that is completely cut from the English version. What's even more interesting though is the sentence immediately after this one. In English, his words are, I will rise again, implying that the bringer of demise himself will return. Let's take a look at what he says in Japanese. Do not forget, this will be repeated. In Japanese, the bringer of demise states that this will happen again, specifically referring to the fact that the curse of the demon tribe, the hatred that fuels them, will continue to be reborn. Whether or not the bringer of demise himself will return though is not explicitly mentioned. With this knowledge at hand, we can confirm the true identity of the corpse that appears to come to life in the trailer for the sequel to Breath of the Wild. Let's take a look at a final entry of the Hyrule Compendium. The English entry for Calamity Ganon explains how Ganon is hibernating within a cocoon and is attempting to regenerate a physical form. The Japanese version though greatly expands on this concept, revealing some very exciting insights into Breath of the Wild's sequel. The source of the darkness that has repeatedly appeared and enveloped Hyrule since ancient times. Depending on the era, it's referred to as Great Demon King or Calamity. It was waiting inside a cocoon for its body to resurrect, but it responded to Link's awakening and appeared in an incomplete form. The specific word used in Japanese here though is resurrect, which is different to the word regeneration that is used in the English version. The word resurrect strongly implies that Ganon's real body was dead and he was waiting for it to come back to life. This also matches exactly what we see in the trailer to Breath of the Wild's sequel. This means that the Ganon Link defeated in Breath of the Wild was not the true source of the calamity at all. The Ganon in Breath of the Wild was a mere ghost, Ganondorf's vengeful spirit, that was fueled with Onnen, or hatred. While Link was busy dealing with Ganondorf's vengeful spirit, he was able to salvage enough time to finally complete his resurrection, returning life to his corpse. Fueled with an immense amount of hatred that's exerting from his dead body, he is literally able to raise Hyrule Castle into the air. I'm certain that in the sequel, Ganondorf will step into the role of the Bring of Demise himself and unleash significant demise to Hyrule.
There are many words and phrases in Japanese that are certainly challenging to translate to English without providing some kind of explanation. However, it just so happens that the words that required a deeper explanation are essential to developing the true plot of Skyward Sword and Breath of the Wild. There are even more instances where this is the case. I can't wait to share even more discoveries with you. For now though, that'll be all from me. I truly hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching. Until next time, see you soon!